Welcome back. I'm Jeff, and this is episode 11 in the Sea Kong series, where I am reproducing the arcade version of Donkey Kong in C11 and SDL2. In this episode, we're going to work on the attract mode. So when you go up to an arcade cabinet uh, and there isn't credit in the machine, um, typically it's in a what's known as an attract mode where it will go through a series of screens within the game sometimes credit screens instruction screens occasionally the machine will make some noise uh, sometimes machines have external lighting on them uh, that will flash or occasionally be uh, change colors so that it attracts people's attention attracts people to the game uh, so that they want to play it um, the Donkey Kong attract sequence is actually very simple um, in the universe of attract sequences. Uh, essentially, we go from the insert coin screen, which I'll show, also shows the high scores, to a demo of the stage one uh, screen, which is the one going up the girders. Uh, and then we go to the title screen and the title flashes. Um, each one of those is on screen for about 10 seconds. Uh, and then we go back to the original insert coin screen. And that cycle repeats until someone puts a credit, a coin in the machine uh, to play. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's, let's build that. So to start with, um, I wanted to come in here to the machine module because uh, we have to, right now I have a tile map that I created for the insert coin display, but it's, we're not actually showing any live data for the high score list. We're not, the high score at the top is the first so the zeroth entry in the high score list uh, is what is shown on the top of the screen all the time. And then the list, uh, the ranked list at the bottom, it comes from this uh, array here. And what I wanted to do first is I wanted to, when we initialize the um, machine, and before I do that, I need to go to the bin folder and remove the machine dat file that's already there because if I don't do that, then we're just going to keep reloading whatever is on disk and it's not going to match what we initialized to here. So um, let's just do a simple loop here and we'll set the uh, so score history uh. <clears throat> oops and let's actually So we're just gonna create some bogus scores here um, so that we can see something legitimate. And then for the name, we have what, eight characters? Yeah. So let's do
Okay, so this should create A, B, C, D, E, and then we start at 10,000, go down by 1,000. Um, and the high score here should match the first one. We're not, we're gonna set this to zero here though, because where we really wanna do that is, um, well, it does get saved though. So yeah, let's just do this because this should match the very first entry. So that should initialize our machine score information as something that we can use for testing purposes. And then um, let's, let's run the app and we'll go into the tile map editor and just uh, get a couple pieces of information real quick. Okay, so what we want to do here is figure out a couple things. So first, this is at row seven, comma six, so column six, and then it goes to Column 1A, row F. And the reason I'm, I'm getting these should become apparent in a moment. We're gonna, we need to know how to update the screen, the tile map. So the scores are row 13, column eight, and there's five of those and we skip a line. So it's every other. And the name should be at column 10. Okay. So now if we go to the state machine and we wanna to go to the insert Coin, uh, coin. Oh, I'm in the header. Okay. So we don't need to update the tile map every frame, right? Because the update function gets called for a state every frame. Um, it's like the, the credits, we also don't really need to technically show, like this is kind of wasteful. Um, we're updating the tile map every frame here and we don't really need to do that. So let's do this. <clears throat> Let's have an update credits. I'll move that there. We'll call update credits here. credits whenever a credit event actually happens. <laughs> and then I was looking, did some digging. Um, so let's, I'm gonna change this back. There are technically two coin slots and in the hardware they are tracked individually, but um, there isn't a the only thing the game is really doing is checking to see if there's more than one 
credit unit. So if that's 25 cents or 50 cents or whatever you set it at um, in the arcade. So we only really need to track one of those. So we can simplify this. And also the game only supports up to 90 credits, which is kind of a weird number, <laughs> but there you have it. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And then we also need to remember to, whenever we make a structural change to these, we gotta remember to delete the dat file because loading in a old format dat file is gonna corrupt potentially corrupt our memory. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so I think I got all of the yep, credit stuff reverted. Um, okay, so now we only call update credits when we need to. And that, we call that initially in the enter, right? Because um, we're gonna enter the state and we're gonna update. We don't wanna change the display unless we need to. So if you drop a credit, then we update that region of the map again, but otherwise we're not doing it in the loop anymore. Um, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to uh, put the high score information on here. Um, so we go back to the machine. We have the machine header update. This is actually showing the high score. So that's already there and that's shared amongst several different states. So I think we'll just we'll leave that. So this is uh, machine header update and um, so we're going to set the tile map. We're going to update the high score and the header. Uh, the, the one up that starts blinking when we have credit in the machine. So I think this one-up thing that we're doing here uh, is, because it's one-up or two-up, I think this is really, yeah, I'm going to move this to the machine module for the header. And And it's already, um, it's already on the tile map. We don't need to redisplay it. <clears throat>
So let's see, it's been a while since I've looked at this. So, okay, so if a blinker's duration is zero, then it's disabled. It won't blink. trick is though we want to yes we want to disable the blinker but we want the text to be permanently visible So we call machine header update. We're going to pass in ticks now because we may start a blinker. If the machine has credits, then we're going to start the one up blinking. Um, hey, I'm wondering if I want to do this. Changing my mind. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to put this here temporarily. So we're going to copy the tile map into the background. And when we do that, yes, we're assigning the flags from the tile map directly. So the blinking flag is going to be reset. 
right? So whenever we, whenever we re-enter the state, we're gonna be at a, the, the tile map's gonna be at a clean start state. We're gonna update the header, which will update the high score value. At the top, we're gonna call update credits, which is gonna update the credit count on the lower part of the screen. And if we have credits and a blinker hasn't already been set up, we're going to start the blinker. Yeah, that's the trick is Because when we leave this state, the thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we leave the state, credit count is zero, we want, uh, we want to disable the blinker. Because um, when we re-enter the state, if we have credit, it would re-enable it. in oops machine here and okay so we know that the score uh, score y is 13 um, we know there are five scores. So the score is a column eight and color. See, this is interesting. All right, so let's, I'm gonna come back to this one because this is a case where we don't, the palette's already been set for us and we don't wanna change the palette. We just wanna use whatever is in the tile map. I'll come back to that. So we're going to format it, and this is going to be machine score history I score. And we're going to do the same thing with the name. So it's the same Y, the X is 10. Um, is that right? That doesn't seem right. So that would update the bottom part. Now the palette, oops, update credits. Um, 
you know. Oh, hex. Hex, hex, hex. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So that's 16. Uh, 17, 18, 19. And then 16. Okay, that looks good. So we have the high score, which matches the first rank score in the header. One up is not blinking right now because we don't have any credit. Our high score table is now being dumped into the actual tile map, um, but the palette's broken there because we're overriding it and we don't want to do that. Um, there are only 64 pallets, so I'm going to make this a signed integer, and I'm not a huge fan of doing this, but it works. So essentially, um, so if pallet is greater than zero. Well, actually, so okay. In this case, this is a space. Yeah, let's, let's we'll apply the same rule everywhere. So if the palette we pass in is a positive value, it'll we'll assign it. Otherwise, we're just going to use whatever palette was already in that block. And what we can do is create a macro current palette. So here I can pass current palette and at least then it reads a little bit better in the code <clears throat> so that should update the text the tile number and flags that'll indicate that it's changed yes so now the first three lines are red the last two are yellow and let me just compare that i believe that's correct yeah i believe that's correct um so all right now let me just really quickly i'm, I'm running the so if we put one credit in the one up starts to blink, so let's test that. Uh, what was my credit? It was F3? No. Can't remember my own. My own key mapping. What did I do? No, number one. Okay. Right, because enter is start. <laughs> okay. So number one, there's a credit, one up starts blinking. But what we need to do now is we need to replace these lines here to indicate, it should say push and then only one player button. If we have more than one credit, it should say one or two player. Um, oops. Yeah, one or two players button. Okay. So what line is that? I'm just comparing against the arcade here. 
Yeah, okay. All right, so let's do that. <clears throat> so we need a helper function that will just clear Because we have a BG set, this will set the entire tile map. We have a BG fill, but this is the entire map. Um, what we really want is a video BG fill rect, which then takes a Y, X with And it, you know what, let's do this because we have a rect. So let's just use that. And then we want the tile number and the palette. And let's make it so that we can use that signed approach for the palette number. Okay. So let me put it in the header file. We're going to walk the lines of that rectangle and the, the rows, and we're going to go across. And the inside here more or less uh, works the same. So if the palette is not uh, negative, then we'll set it, we'll set the tile, and we'll set the flag so that it will at least refresh. Um, okay, so now in State Machine, This is definitely part of the credit update. So we're going to fill from seven. Oh, we got to make a rack here. So.
Okay, so there's our rectangle. We're going to clear. And we're going to clear it with tile A, palette F. So that will, whenever we have a credit, that will fill that, clear that section at the top where it says insert coin. So let's verify that it does that part. Oh, right, because we have stored credits. Okay, so. Okay, yep, so that's clear. Now we need to display a message that depends on the number of credits in the machine at that point. So if it's greater than one, this is going to be the, you know, push. So this is going to be, let's do this, run it again. Go into the editor. So this is going to be This is like 622. Video BG stir. Uh, 622. The palette is going to be the same as the credit message. So, palette 3. No, is that right? I don't think that's right, but we'll fix it. So this just says push, and then... So actually, this is always there. And then one... We skip one line, and I'm going to say... So I think the palette is wrong, but we'll figure out what that should be. Actually, now that I think of it, yeah, oops, that's way off. Palette's already in use, the one we want. So we'll just skip setting it. Okay. 
this gives you a different Y position. I don't know. These might be. There we go. That looks close. <clears throat> okay, so now let me remove the machine.dat so we lose our existing credits. Okay. So now if I put a credit in the machine, yep, only one player button, one or two player buttons, there you go. All right, so that part's working. So we've got the high score in the header is coming from the high score history table. We've got the high score history table rendering data from the machine uh, structure properly. So that means that later on when we implement the code that's gonna capture your name and your high score and put it in that structure and save it to disk, it'll come full circle. Um, we can put credits in the machine. We can put up to, should be 90 credits. I think that might be one off. Hmm. No, there you go. 90 credits, so that matches the arcade. All right. Um, okay, so that part is good. Uh, we added a video BG fill rect so we can fill a rectangle in the tile map to clear it out. Um, okay. So now Let's remove the machine dat. We're not going to put any credit in because now we want to move on to the part where we cycle for the attract code. So what we need, which we implemented the capability of this in the last episode. We added the timer. We need a timer. We're going to call this the... Um, I'm going to call this and I actually kind of think this is maybe common state. Let's call this the attract timer. And back here and what we'll do is when the game boots up we will start that timer so it's 10 seconds the context into that. All right, so we're going to create that timer once up front and it's just going to run. And it's just always going to reset itself. And
so we're going to make a struct. It's going to have the um, timer on it, and it's going to have We actually want to call it on the leave because we want the timer to start. You know, it's at this point that the transition is, we, we're literally going to jump to that next state after the boot. So we want to do that right at that point. Um, we'll have a teeny tiny amount of drift in the pointer. So that may be the first time in, it'll be just under 10 seconds, but it should be close. So what does the attract mode do? We started insert coin, 10 seconds elapse. We go to the demo mode for the stage one, 10 seconds elapse. We go to the title, 10 seconds elapse. We come back. Um, So let's have an active flag on here. And the active flag is false if we have credits in the machine. If we have credits in the machine, we're on that insert coin stage and it's just waiting for somebody to press start to play. Otherwise, then the state is active So we're going to assume at the boot of the machine that the attract mode would be active. And then we're going to have an array of So it's going to be state insert coin state game screen one state title So then in our struct, we're going to have an index so 
so we reset it to zero. When the timer expires, if track state, state index is less than max track states, we're gonna increment it. Otherwise, we're going to reset it. Okay, so we have an attract state structure. We have a static instance of that in our module. We initialize that when we leave the boot state. So it's active by default. We're starting at state. Whatever the zero with entry in our states array is. Um, oh, and... Right, so if track state active, if it's not active, we just keep resetting the timer, but we don't do anything. Here, we pop whatever the current state is. So state context. Wherever we're at, we're at in state machine, the attract timer is going to pop us off that state. We're going to move to the next state, whatever that is, and then we're going to push that state onto so the S states, let's attract state, state index, just like that. Oops, no, S states. There we go. Okay, so if the attract mode's not active, this timer does nothing. Otherwise, we cast our user pointer to the state context. We pop the current state off. So if we're on insert coin, that gets popped off. We're going to move to the next index in the state list. And we're going to push whatever that X state is. So we're going to go from here to here to here and back every 10 seconds. So we're just going to wait here for 10 seconds. Okay. Now, obviously, this is not a demo, but that's okay. We're not, we're not working on that part yet today. We're just getting the, the cycle in place. <clears throat> Ooh, it went back to boot. That doesn't, no, that doesn't seem right. Okay, game screen one, title. Title enter, title update, title leave.
So it should be insert coin. Okay. When you just watch it, 10 seconds seems like forever. Okay, there's our title. Okay. Ah, but, hmm, interesting goes back to boot. That doesn't seem right. Okay, so you'll notice that the sprites stayed on the screen. So we need to You call video reset sprites whenever we leave one of these. Because that will reset them so they don't display anymore. Reset. That's interesting. Okay. Um, that should. I know what's wrong. It's not the sprites, it's actor reset. So in our actor module, because it's actually, it's actually the actor's module that's doing this. Because yes, we, we're resetting the sprites, but then the actor module is going through it. Yeah. So we want to call this here, but we also want to loop over the actors. reset the flags. So we reset the sprites so that the next time the video subsystem renders the display, none of the sprites will, dis will display. Then we loop over the actors, grabbing each one of them, 
So right now we have a limited set of available actors. This will grow, but we disable all of them. So the next time actor updates called, they're all disabled and we'll skip them all. Okay, so this should be actor reset. And then I just realized that the title is also going to be using some actors. So we'll call actor reset there as well. Okay, good. There you go. Actors are reset. Okay, now we just have to figure out why Instead of coming up with a way of converting enums to a string, we'll just log in each of these. It's cleaner. Okay, so we're in in state, uh, insert coin. Game screen one. Yeah, state boot was all the way up here. Just fine. Okay, we're in state title. And this should go back to state insert coin but it goes back to state boot, then insert coin. Why? So let's do this. Let's put a breakpoint on state boot. So this one's coming from game init. Just makes sense.
Okay, so we should get a break here, which we did. It's coming from the attract timer callback. So the state index is three. Ah, yep. One off. And that would explain it. Ah, and there's a couple things we're missing. Here we go, right back to insert coin. Okay, perfect. So let's just touch up a couple things. So in insert coin update. So we want to call machine header update in several of these. <clears throat> and that again, that high score in the header we only need to set that one time. Okay. So that should make sure that that high score value is set at the top. <clears throat> okay, high, high score value is set. Okay, set, perfect. So that looks all right. So now on the title screen, the title state, we need to do some palette magic. So we did video fill or uh, video BG fill rect. We want to do video BG pal rect. So we're going to give it a rect and we're going to give it a palette. So we're just gonna take this loop. We're not gonna change the tile. We are gonna change the palette. And then let's run this, go into the tile map editor and figure out what the range of those tiles are. 
Oh. Hmm. I bet this is going to break. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's do editor enter. Disable the attract state. And then when we when we leave the editor for good. So I should be able to go into the tile map editor and yep. Good. Okay. So we're going to go. So this is row six and two. say this is um, every 17 milliseconds. Enter the title state, we set the tile map, we update the machine header, so that's going to set the high score in the top. Um, we start our timer, uh, and then our timer is going to call our video BG fill or uh, pal rect, and the rect is going to be. Left six, top two, width 
18 hex height 0b. So we're going to pass the rectangle and we're going to pass the palette. So we, we loop over all the palettes. We update the palette of those tiles for the Donkey Kong title. And that's going to create some interesting fireworks on that, uh, on that display. So let's see what that looks like. Sort of. I got my ranges off again. Oh, that's because ah, I did it backwards. <laughs> yep. Close, okay. Width and height off by one, of course. And the flash lasts too long. In the arcade, it doesn't flash that long. Um, There we go. Almost. Okay. Um, so the other thing that's missing from the uh, title display is Donkey Kong. We, and that's an actor that we need to put together. And he doesn't move, it's just a pose. And then those sprites are displayed. But yeah, the the cycle is working correctly. This is what should be happening. So the Donkey Kong Brights.
So I'm just gonna run the arcade real quick. Okay, so he's got the straight grin, and what the left leg is up, and the right arm is up. So it would be one of these. This arm up. So let's go to actor. Call it Donkey Kong title pose. Okay, so we already have an actor. Right, so it's an animation. So we need... So we have one frame. That's not going to be the right tiles, but what we're going to do So this is actually going to be a pose of Donkey Kong climbing a ladder. We're going to change the tiles. What I want to do first, though, is just get, just get it in the right spot. And then we can adjust the tiles in the uh, animation so that it's the correct set of tiles. 
Yeah. Okay. So we need to move him down. Uh, Okay, positionally, I would say that's about right. So now, if we go back to the actor module and as Donkey Kong title pose. Uh, so let's take a look here. So I think So it's actually going to be three across, I think. So this is 32, 32, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40. All right. So Six, four, seven, eight, nine, fifty. So let's see what that looks like. I don't know if I'm picking the right ones. <clears throat> this this would be another tool that would be neat. maybe worthwhile building inside the uh, the game where you can position actors like this and it would save it out to a file. Okay, yeah, kind of not exactly right. The palette doesn't seem right. <clears throat> so let me do this. Let me run the arcade here.
Okay, so... Yeah, I think I might actually want to do a little tool that would let me lay these out because for the amount of time I would put into creating the tool, it would make laying out all the rest of this a lot easier. Um, yeah, see, I, I have the wrong, yeah, I've got the wrong sprites. Okay. So here's the thing I'm gonna do. Let's, this is, we're running an hour and a half on this episode. So I think the spirit of what I wanted to get done, I have here. I need to, we need to get the sprite tiles fixed for the Donkey Kong. And I think what I'm going to do is make another little tool that will help us lay out actors. And um, maybe what it'll do is it'll just spit out, uh, like if you save it, it'll spit out this. Um, I don't know. I'll think, I'll think through that maybe a little bit because um, I think that would be kind of nice to have. So, um, so let's review what we've got, which um, again, the goal was to get the insert coin screen working properly or more properly, get the attract sequence put together. And I think we're pretty close on that. So in the video module, I added a macro for current palette. And this is really just a uh, token that you can pass in that tells certain functions, don't change the palette, is ultimately what that translates to. And then I changed the prototype on some of these to take a signed integer because there are only 64 palettes, so that fits safely in a signed 8-bit integer. Um, and by making it signed, if we pass negative one, we can use that as a special flag to mean don't change the palette. Uh, I added two new helper functions to the video subsystem. Video BG pal rect. So this takes a rectangle, it takes a palette, and it goes through that rectangle on the tile map and applies that palette. And then video BG fill rect, this does the same thing except you can pass a tile as well. So a tile and a palette. If you don't want the palette value to change, you could just pass current palette or negative one to this and it would skip changing the palette. So in video BG stir, change the signature and then we just check, right? If the palette's greater than zero, we update it. Otherwise we don't. Then our new functions, or I'm sorry, in video BG update, I, I changed the, I just changed this so that we check the duration up front. And if it's zero, we just continue. That de-indented a bunch of this code, made it a little easier to read. Um, and then down here, we have our two new functions. Video BG pal rect. So we loop over the rows, we loop over the columns, we grab that tile from the map, we update the palette, we update the flags. And then for video BG fill rect, we do the same thing. We always set the tile, and then if the palette is not negative one, then we set it. In state machine, um, I added code for the attract mode. So we have a max of three states in the attract loop, the insert coin, the game screen one, and the title. Uh, so we create a struct here that tracks the state for the attract mode. Are we, is the attract mode active? We have the pointer to the timer for it. And then what state are we in, in the attract loop? Um, then we have our instance of that struct, the timer for the attract loop. So if the attract state's not active, the, the timer is a no op, it does nothing. It just resets itself. Otherwise we grab the state context from the user field on the timer. We pop whatever the current state is off the state stack we increment to the next state in our loop. 
uh, if we hit the end of that loop, we go back to the beginning um, and we push that next state onto the state stack. And then the, we have a helper function attract init that sets everything up to an initial state. And then in boot leave, so we go, the game starts, it goes into the boot sequence. That's what flashes the screen with some colors. We call attract init at the end of that when we leave the boot state. Uh, in the insert coin state, um, we implemented you know, the behavior around this so it's a little bit closer to what it should be. So the high score table updates with real data from the data structure. The high score and the header updates with data from the data structure. Um, and then we update the display and the, we start flashing the one up and we go into the, you know, waiting for the player to hit start mode if credits have been inserted into the machine. And we have a helper function here that loops over the high score table in the machine structure and updates the tile map appropriately with the scores and the names. Um, and then insert coin, when we come into the insert coin state, we get the tile map, we put that on, we update the header, we update the credit information, right? We update the score history. We only have to update the tile map once because the tile map is persistent. Until it's changed again, it'll just keep re-rendering the way that it's configured. So we don't have to constantly refresh it. Um, and then in the insert coin update, I consolidated the coin slots down to one. Um, and then when we have a coin state change, uh, I call the update credits. The original machine only supports up to 90 credits. So that's, that's all we'll support here. <laughs> and um, when we leave the insert coin state, if we don't have any credits and the blinker has been created, we just disable it by setting the duration to zero. And then uh, in the title, so the title is where it has Donkey Kong and then uh, the sprite of Donkey Kong below it. Um, this flashes the palette, cycles the palette on the Donkey Kong title itself. So this code loops through the palettes and then updates the palette in the tile map to that new value. When we enter this state, we set the tile map uh, to the title. We update the machine header. We start the timer for the palette cycle. And then we grab the Donkey Kong actor and set the title pose animation, which is just a one frame animation. I need to finish laying out that uh, that animation, but that's just really, you know, at this point, pretty mechanical. Picking the right tiles and palettes and lining them up correctly so that it shows up. The All the underlying pieces work properly. It's just getting the data structure to be proper now. And then when we leave the title, we reset the actors. So we added this new function actor reset. This prevents actors from carrying over from state to state if we don't want them to. We stop the timer and we, we null it out. And then I call actor reset now in the leaves on a lot of these because it also I also call machine header update because that will keep that high score consistent at the top. And then when we go from state to state, whatever actors we we create or grab and modify and make active during that particular state, we just want those to go away when we go to another state. Um, again, calling machine header update here. And then down here at the bottom, I just added log messages when we transition to a state so that we can see in the log what states we're going to. Player, I took out the code that puts the one up and the blink because first, all the tile maps now that are in the tile map editor have those tiles already in place. We don't need to recreate them. And the blink is kind of tied to state around when credits are added to the machine. Like that actually starts blinking when you put credit in the machine. So to kind of match that behavior, I've moved that 
blinking functionality into the insert coin state because that's really where a lot of that behavior lives. Um, got rid of the two credit slots. We just have one credit slot now. Um, and then in the machine init, to have some valid data to put in the high score history table, um, I just generate some bogus score data and names so that we have something legitimate to put on the screen. And then in the actor module, I added the Anim Donkey Kong title pose, which like, again, we got to fill that out. Um, and I will probably do that uh, in between this episode and the next, because like I say, that's really just the mechanical exercise of going through the tile map, counting the tiles, figuring out which palette is the right palette. Um, and uh, I've gone, yeah, I've have, we have previous episodes in the series where I go, series I could go through that um, and really nothing there much changes. And I'll debate whether or not I want to build a tool for it. Um, I mean, I, there's probably some value in it. Donkey Kong is probably the most complex actor in the entire game. Um, most of the others are pretty simple. Uh, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll just go through and get all the actors laid out uh, so that we can then just focus on gameplay implementation instead of dealing with, you know, again, mucking around with tile positioning and offsets and all that. Uh, I added the actor reset. And then just to get started, I started to try to flush out what the Donkey Kong title pose animation would look like. This is not quite accurate, but you know, Donkey, the, the actor shows up on the screen. It's in the right spot. I just have to get the right tiles, offsets, and palettes so that it looks correct. Actor reset. So we call video reset sprites. So this, so the actor module is, is a higher level than the sprite or video module. So the actor module makes use of the sprite system in the video module to display complex animated uh, combinations of sprites. Um, so this actually goes to that lower level, shuts all the sprites off, and then we loop over the actors that we've got defined in our actor list, and we just disable them. And then that way, when the main loop runs again and we update the actors, they're disabled, we skip them. Um, and then down here, I added the uh, accessor for the Donkey Kong title pose animation. We know that's working. The data itself is not correct, but... Um, So um, in episode 12, what I would like to do is I would like to work on the, um, that long introduction, which we actually kind of used as a test bed in several of the very early episodes um, because that was the tile map I had automatically kind of ripped, although I, I, my ripper wasn't 100% accurate, but it was close enough. Uh, anyway, I've tidied up that tile map. It's now in the tile map editor. And um, that's the one where Donkey Kong climbs up that long ladder carrying Pauline. And then he jumps and it flat or causes the girders to uh, collapse down into that stair step pattern. Um, so I have all of the parts for us to do that, I think. Um, and as part of that process, uh, since I have to lay out this Donkey Kong animation for the title, I'll probably also lay out the Donkey Kong animations. I have them climbing. I need to add the animations for him jumping. Um, so I'll get those pieces uh, prepped. And then in episode 12, you know, we'll go through the process of implementing him climbing up the ladder, the ladder kind of rolling up behind him, and then him jumping, and then the girders uh, collapsing so or 
yeah, unrolling, unraveling, however you want to describe it. So I think that'll be episode 12. Uh, and then episode 13, um, we'll skip to the end and we'll get the high score. Uh, so when you play the game and you've done really well and you want to record your name for your high score, we'll get that screen working. And, and then we'll verify, right, that we update the machine data structure, we save it to disk, and then the, the, you know, the insert coin screen updates correctly. Um, so we'll get all that working. And then uh, once that's done, then it'll just be the game screens. Uh, and we'll start at game screen one, which is the girder uh, climbing up level. And I think we're going to break the gameplay down into several sections. So I think we'll probably have, I'm going to guess a couple episodes that are going to focus specifically on the input for Mario Jumpman um, and getting that behavior rock solid, right? Getting him animating and timing correctly. Uh, he moves a little fat, way too fast actually. Now the jump isn't quite right. Uh, climbing ladders, um, picking up hammers, you know, we'll get all that working. And then, then we'll start layering in other parts of the gameplay. And what I think I would like to do is we'll, we'll test that Mario, um, all the input mechanics and the, the physics and the ladder climbing and the hammering. We'll test all of that across all the different uh, game screens first. So there won't be any bad guys, right? It'll just be Mario and input and climbing ladders and moving around the level and making sure that all that behaves on every single um, tile map because we want that to be consistent and we want to know that that works correctly. Then once we have that, we'll start layering on um, the bad guys and the other parts of the, the game. So anyhow, thanks uh, everybody for following along. Uh, if you like this uh, series, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up or subscribe on YouTube. I'd appreciate it. And um, otherwise, uh, have a great day. I'll see everybody in the next episode. Bye.